So here we have the physics C electricity and magnetism problem from 2002. So two thin concentric conducting spherical shells insulated from each other have radii of 0.1 meters and 0.2 meters as shown on the right. The inner shell is set at an electric potential of negative 100 volts and the outer shell is set at an electric potential of 100 volts with each potential defined relative to the conventional reference point. Let QI and QO represent the net charge on the inner and outer shells respectively, and let R be the radial distance from the center of the shells. Express all algebraic answers in terms of QI, QO, R, and fundamental constants as appropriate. So part A, using Gauss's law, derive an algebraic expression for the electric field E of R for R R is greater than 0.1 meters and R is less than 0.2 meters. So the electric field between these two, these two shells. So part A. So it says use Gauss's law. So let's write Gauss's law. That's the integral of E dot dA is equal to the Q, the charge, enclosed over the vacuum permittivity. So why we put QI here is that the enclosed charge between these two shells is just the charge of the inside shell. So the charge of the inside shell is what is going to be enclosed and what's going to be on top of here. So we, so we can rewrite this integral on the left side by noticing that the that the dA, the area of the shell, is just the surface area of it. So that's 4 pi r squared. And that is equal to the right side, QI over the vacuum permittivity. And we rearrange that to get A to get E is equal to Q of the inside over 4 pi r squared times the vacuum permittivity. So now for part B. Determine an algebraic expression for the electric field E of R for R is greater than 0.2 meters. So now we're looking at the electric field outside of both of these two shells. So first we have to look at the charge on the outside shell as seen from the outside. So we know that the inside charge is QI. But on the inside surface of the outer shell, the, the, in, the charge on the inner surface must be equal to the negative of that charge of the, out, of the inside shell. So it has to be negative QI. And the total charge on the outside shell has to be QO. So we see that on the outer surface, we have QI plus QO. Because QI and this negative QI cancel out to get the total charge of QO. So when someone looks from the outside onto these two sh concentric shells, they see that there's a charge of QI plus QO. So using Gauss's law as before, we know that the charge enclosed is QI plus QO instead of just QO. all over the vacuum permittivity. So as before, we can rewrite that, and finally we get Q, E is equal to QI plus QO all over 4 pi R squared E naught. So now for part C. Determine the algebraic expression for the electric potential V of R for R is greater than 0.2 meters. So we first note that there's an algebraic expression for the, for the potential in terms of R. So we know that this is equal to the negative integral from 0 to R of the electric field E dot dr. So that we can plug, we can plug, well, since we are looking at the electric potential outside of 0.2 meters, 
where you can also look at the electric field outside of 0.2 meters. So we can just use this expression from part b. So that's equal to the negative integral from infinity to r of qi plus qo all over 4 pi r squared e naught dr. So we can take out these so we can take out everything except the 1 over r squared, and we get negative qi plus qo all over 4 pi epsilon naught times the integral of 1 over r squared, which is negative 1 over r from infinity to r. So now we get that this is equal to qi plus qo all over 4 pi epsilon naught r. And that's our final answer. So now for part d. Using the numerical information given, calculate the value of the total charge qt on the two spherical shells with qt being equal to qi plus qo. So we can see that from the numbers we're given, we are given that the electric potential on the outer shell is plus 100 V. And that is at a radius of 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 meters. So we know that the electric potential at 0 0.2 meters is equal to 100 volts and we can set that equal to the equation we got in part c. So we can set that equal to qi plus q0, I mean qo, over 4 pi epsilon naught times the radius, which is 0 0.2 0 meters. So now all we have to do is to solve for qi plus qo, which is the qt that we want to get. So qi plus qo, and after we plug that into our calculator, we get that the answer is 2.2 times 10 to the negative ninth coulombs of charge. So now we look at the graphs. On the axes below, sketch the electric field E as a function of R. Let the positive direction be radially outwards. So. We look at the electric field from 0 to 0 0.1 radius. So we look at here, we look at Gauss's law, which says that the electric potent, the electric field times the area is, is equal to the charge enclosed over the vacuum permittivity. So we see that inside R, equal, if R is less than 0.1 meters, there's no charge enclosed. So if there's no charge enclosed, then the right side is zero which means that the left side is also zero. So the electric field inside this inner, this inner shell has to be zero because there's no charge enclosed. So we see from here, from zero to 0 0.1, the electric field has to have a value of zero. So now we look at from 0.1 to 0.2. So from 0.1 to 0.2, we actually already, we also we actually already came up with an algebraic expression for it, and that's in part a. So between these two shells, the electric field has a value of has a value of q qi over four pi r squared e to e um, epsilon naught. So for this, we also have to take note that the direction of the electric field determines whether it's positive or negative because the positive direction means that the electric field has to point outwards. So we look at the electric field here, right? So the potential, so we have to see that there's a general rule, which is that the electric field lines always point towards areas of negative potential and always points away from areas of positive potential. So we see that the inner shell has a, has a potential of negative 100, and that's negative. So these electric field lines have to be pointing towards that inner shell. So it has to be pointing inwards. So that means that the shell ha that the electric field lines are negative. So we see that this is a curve with a magnitude of, uh, with a magnitude of 1 over r squared on that order. 
However, it's negative. So we have to draw it like this. And it points and it's negative. And we need to make sure of that. And it's around the curve 1 over r squared. So now we look from point 2 onwards. And we already came up with an algebraic expression for that. And that is in part b. So this is also in the order of r squared, of, of 1 over r squared. But for this, we see that the, itch, that the potential on the outer shell is positive, v, is positive 100 volts. So that means that electric field lines point outwards. And outwards means positive. So this 1 over r squared curve is positive. So we draw it like this. And that's a positive 1 over r squared curve. So now we look at part f. On the axes below, sketch the electric potential v as a function of r. So we have to notice that the electric potential is the negative integral of the, of the, um, of the electric field, as we see in part c right here with this integral. So we look at the electric field here from 0 to 0 0.1, and it's 0. So that means that the electric potential does not change from 0 to 0 0.1. And we see that at 0 0.1, it has a value of negative, v, negative 100 V. So from, from R equals 0 to R equals 0 0.1, there is no change, and the electric potential is still negative 100 V. So you measure from here over to here, and this is equal to negative 100 volts. So now we look at from point 0.1 to point 0.2, so this is where it gets a little complicated because we know from between from between r equals 0.1 to r equals 0.2, the electric potential changes from negative 100 to positive 100. That means at some point between here, the electric potential crosses zero. So it's so it's equal to zero at some point between 0.1 and 0.2. And we see that the end result of the electric potential is 100, is positive 100 volts. So we see that at point 2, it's a positive value right here. And it has to have crossed 0 here. But now we have to look at the slope of this curve. So now here is where we look at the electric field. Since the electric field is the negative slope of the potential function, we see that the electric field it becomes smaller in magnitude, but it's also negative, which means that the slope is positive. So here it's clear that the slope has to be positive, right? It has to be going up to get from negative 100 to positive 100, but it's also concave down because the magnitude of the electric field is decreasing. So to draw a, a concave down curve from negative 100 to positive 100, we draw something like this. Like this. All right. So this would be from the electric potential from point one to point two. So now we look at from point two onwards, and we already have a function for that, and that's in part c. So from so in part c, we found an expression for the electric potential v r for r is greater than point two. So we see that this is in the order of one over r. So we see that that is positive, and this is at 100. So we draw a curve in the order of 1 over r, which would look like this. And that would be our final answer, and this is the curve for the electric potential as a function of r. So now we look at the rubric for this question. So here we see that point A was worth three points. So one point was gained for an expression of Gauss's law. So this is what we had right here. Another point was for an intermediate step that talked about the surface area. So that's this right here. And then for a final answer, and that's this right here. So for part B, part B was worth two points. So first of all, 
one point was earned for saying that Gauss's law is equal for superior writing Gauss's law, but with the enclosed charge being equal to QI plus QO. So basically what we did here by saying that the inner charge was Q1, QI, and the inner of and the inner charge at the outside shell was negative QI, and the total outside shell charge was QI plus QO. So that's one point there. And for the second point was for a correct final answer. So a note is that this, this expression alone would have gotten you both points. You didn't have to write this first expression. So for part C, this was worth two points. So first, the first, part, the first point is for writing this integral out, which is like this. And the second point was for writing the final answer. So that's this. And if you had just written this final answer, you would have still gotten both points. And for part D is worth one point. So the correct, so you had to show work to determine the correct value. So what we did here for plugging in the point for 100 volts at R equals 0.2, this would have worked and we got a final answer that was correct. So now for part E, which is the graph. So first we, so first one, this was worth three points. So one point was for this segment from R equals zero to R equals 0.1. So this was worth one point. So now for a second segment that's concave down and it's from R equals 0.1 to 0.2. So this was another point, it's concave down. And for this other point, which is concave, this other uh, segment, which is concave up, and it's positive for r is greater than 0.2, and we have that right here. So now for part f, this was worth four points. So for a continue, one point for a continuous set of segments that have slope discontinuities at r equals 0.1 and at r equals 0.2. So we see that we have that. These, all of these are discontinuous in slope, but continuous segments that link together. So as a whole, this earns one point. So another point was earned for a segment indicating a constant negative potential for between r is equal to zero and r is equal to one. So right here, it's constant and it's negative. So we get a point there. And it's also equal to value negative 100 volts, which we noted up here. So for another, so another point was gained for a segment that is increasing concave down and crosses the r axis. For r is equal to 0.1 to r is equal to 0.2. So we have a segment that is increasing, it is concave down, and it does cross the r axis. So that fulfills another point. And for the final point, we see that a segment that is, so we need to see a segment that is concave up and it's positive for R is greater than 0.2 and that line does not touch the horizontal axis. So we get that last point. So one thing that's important to know is that the solutions right here, it has these vertical axis labels of like, um, for the electric field, it shows negative 4,000 um, newtons per coulomb, 500, negative, 500 newtons per coulomb, and for the potential graph, it says negative 100 volts and positive 100 volts. Well, these are not necessary, and we didn't include them in our run of this, so it's not necessary to have these vertical axis labels for full credit.